Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be the books that I want to read in the month of February. February seems to be the month for all the readathons. There are three happening in this month, two of them are happening at the same time um, and I've not decided whether I'm fully taking part in them yet or whether I'm just going to keep them in the back burner. So the first readathon that's happening is Polathon. This is run by Jade over at JD Ray Reads. And her only actual prompt for the readathon is that books need to be either in a polar setting, snowy, wintry, icy, anything that you would associate with uh, the polar regions of Earth. Um, it doesn't have to be on Earth. It can be, you know, a snowy setting off Earth. Um, but yes, that's her only actual prompt for it. I will leave a link to um, her video about it all down below. It is running at the time that you're seeing this video. So this video is going to go up right as um, Polathon starts. And that is the week commencing the 5th of February, finishing on the 11th. Uh, so it's for the whole week. Um, it's a seven day readathon and you do have to submit books for it. There are teams, there are three teams and there's an additional prompt link to all three teams. But like I say, I will leave it linked down below. If you're interested, go and take a look. I haven't decided if I'm doing it yet or not, but I have picked a couple of books that I think might fit um, just in case. And I'll see how I feel during the week. The second readathon is the Literature readathon. Uh, some of you, if you've been around for a while, may remember that I was taking part in the Literature Book Club run by Steph over at Steph Loves. She has chosen to wind up the book club, but she's decided to take it forward as a readathon. And this is going to be the first one. So this is going to be running um, from, from the 19th of uh February right the way through until the 25th of February so again it's another week long there are prompts it is a romance theme um, so I will just read those prompts to you uh, so for this she's given us an illustrated cover um, an LGBTQ plus romance uh, she has said to take part in a sprint uh, read a book by an author who is not of white origin. Um, to share your TBR on social media. A five-star prediction book. A book you choose through a poll. A book that features your favourite trope. And finally, a new-to-you author. Uh, so like I said, that is running from the 19th to the 25th. The final readathon is 72 hours in the reading nook and this is going to run from the 22nd of February until the 25th. So the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday that the Clutcher um, readathon is running. This is being run by Cassidy from uh, Covers with Cassidy, Lexi from Books with Lexi and Mel from Melanor Reads. Again, I'll leave a link to the announcement video down below if you want to go and check it out. And this is essentially um, 72 hours where you're snuggled up in a reading den for um, all of that time with your books. Just reading, eating all the cosy snacks, all the cosy drinks um, and just having a good time with your books. They do have spinner wheels with prompts on and they do have two spinner wheels. It is exactly the same prompts on each, but what they theme the wheels so this year um the theme is one is books outside of your comfort zone and the other is books in your comfort zone so you'll have you'll spin the wheel you'll get one of these prompts and you will either pick a book outside of your comfort zone or in your comfort zone depending on which wheel you've spun again i'll leave a link to the one of the announcement videos for you down below so you can go and check it out as well if you want to uh, the prompts for the 72 hours is or an author you've read from before, a new to you author, a book under 300 pages, a book with more than 300 pages, 
a wild which is you can read any book you want most read format most least read format a friend recommendation a tbr veteran and finally a new release now for new release because it is only the second month of the year they have said it can be from 2023 or the first couple of months of 2024 so you're not restricted to just something that's come out in the last couple of months those are the three readathons like i say i'm not 100 percent if i'm going to take part in them some of the books that i picked up for this month will fit for those um some won't so i'll just see how it goes as always i am taking part in the um book club that I'm in whose name escapes me I'm very sorry Jess um brain doesn't want to work with words anymore uh but our February pick we went with mythological retellings as the theme and as a group we have picked The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper this is about Amara whose family has been plunged into debt and poverty um and she's living as a slave in a brothel in Pompeii um, but she is trying to make the best of it and trying to win back her freedom um, it is the first book in a trilogy um, I think this is a reread for some it does sound very good um, over the last couple of years I have been getting into all of the uh mythological retellings especially around greece and roman mythology more greece than roman um but yeah i'm looking forward to picking this one up um it was quite a difficult choice between the the three choices that we had i may even go on. one of the other choices was atalanta by jennifer saint which has been on my tbr since it came out last year um so i may have a go at reading that one as well this month um, but yes, this is going to be high on my list of priorities for the month. So for Polathon, I've picked two books. Now, I don't know if I can get through both books in the week, um, but I think I could certainly do one of them. And it's a series that I've been meaning to finish for quite a few years. Um, I had the first and second book. I read the first one, never got round to the second one. And then eventually I um, invested in the third one as well. And that series is the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. Uh, so I'm going to start with book two, The Girl in the Tower. Um, it's set in Russia. It has some uh, Russian mythology um, included in the, the original story. I don't know how much of that is carried forward into the rest of the series. But definitely Russia is uh, quite a snowy place. It's known for its cold. Um, parts of it are extremely cold um so yes i i think this will fit perfectly and if i can get to it i'm also going to try and read the winter of the witch and i'm going to try and knock an, an entire series off of my series in progress list at the same time i can't remember the prompts for the three teams that she has i think one of them was a blue cover i think one of them was foiling on the cover uh neither of them have foiling um but i can't remember what the third prompt is either both would fit for blue on the cover i will see how i go and i'll let you know uh these books are about vasya a young girl um who in the first book uh, meets um she can see russian uh, demons now they are fo folklore demons um they are known but religion is taking over and is killing off um these demons um these people of folklore um because they're no longer believed in and she um she's following them so she and it's it's fantasy um and I can't really remember very much about the first one, but I'm sure it will all come back to me when I start reading the second and third. And I'm really looking forward to picking them up. I've been trying to get to these for a long time now. And I think Polathon is the perfect excuse to pick them up, even if I don't actually submit them for Polathon. 
The only book that I've managed to pick out that would fit any of the prompts for the Cliture Readathon or 72 Hours in the Reading Nook is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This is a book that was given to me by Jess um, when I went on her reading retreat last year. It was my uh, blind date with a book that she gifts us all. Um, and this is about two people who are in the um, world of book publishing and they are enemies. I think it's an enemies to lovers story, a uh, small town. Um, and that's all things that I enjoy in my romance novels. Um, it's a drawn cover. It's an illustrated cover. It's a new to me author. Um, yeah, and I think it would fit quite well for one of those. So I decided to pull that one off of my shelves for February reading as well. Other than that, I have one book that I know I am highly likely to pick up in the month. And that is because it is a new release. It comes out on the, I can't remember whether it's the 13th or the 15th of February, but it definitely comes out that week, Valentine's week. And that is Sunbringer by Hannah Kano, which is the second book in the Fallen Gods series. The first book was God Killer. I read God Killer towards the end of last year and really enjoyed it and regretted not picking it up earlier on in the year when I'd had it. And I was stalking the Waterstones website until the pre-order went live for Sunbringer. So that is going to be definitely landing on my doorstep. Um, and yeah, I have no doubt that I will be picking that up as soon as I can after it arrives. It is going to be following on from Kissen and Ello's story. Um, there, it was left on a bit of a cliffhanger in Godkiller. Um, and I think it, that is where it will pick up from what I've seen, from what Hannah Kane has been putting out. I've been following her social media. I've been stalking her social media as well. Uh, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to picking up on it. Kissen is a killer of gods. And in the first book, she set out to help a young girl whose um, whole spirit has been linked with a god. The name of the young girl has escaped me. She is a major character in this. Um, this book has really great representation. Um, it has disability representation. It has LGBTQ plus representation. Um, I don't think the main characters are meant to be perceived as white. Um, I think they are across the spectrum. Um, and yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it and really got behind all of the characters. And I'm looking forward to picking up Sunbringer as well. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading that one. I'm... Other than that, if I have any time for reading at all, I have two carry forwards from January that I need to finish. The first one is Phantom by Joe Nesbo. This is a Harry Hole mystery. It's the ninth book in the series and I've picked this up as my first read from the series because at the time that I bought it, I didn't realise it was slap bang in the middle. Hey ho, I picked it up, I started reading it, I need to finish it. Um, it is a crime novel, it is murder mystery and um, the main character Harry Hole is returning to Oslo, Norway to try and um, get his um, stepson in other fashion released from, from prison because he doesn't believe that he committed the murder that he has been accused of. Um, so yeah, so I need to get to the end of that one. I'm part way through it. Um, I'm, it's okay. I think you, you just shouldn't pick up crime novel series in the middle of them. You should always start at the beginning. Starting in the middle doesn't work because they are well-established characters and there's lots of references to previous murders, previous mysteries that Harry solved, um, that I don't know anything about and it doesn't really give me that much context. So yes, um, need to finish that one. The other one is Robert Michael's Demon in the Trees by Ben Sanders. Um, I've started this one, I'm not very far into it, I'm only about 15-20 pages into it, but I started it in January. One of my aims for the year that I haven't really put out there is that I want to try not to soft DNF books as much as possible. I have a very bad habit 
And part of this is because of readathons. I have a very bad habit of picking up books, starting them, and then because I then decide to take part in a readathon, I put the book down and I don't come back to it. And then I end up doing what I did in December and trying to finish all the books. I want to try and avoid that situation this year because I kind of have an idea of what I want to do in December already and having unfinished books won't help that. So I'm trying not to carry forward too many unfinished books. I'm trying to start books and finish them um, rather than put them down and forget about them. So this is why I'm being very loose about the readathons, whether I'm going to take part in them or not. Um, because I just don't want to, you know, put back myself into a corner and end up with loads of books left on the list um, that haven't been marked off for the year. So yeah, so those are my plans for February. How about you? What do you want to read this month? Um, I'm sorry this is uh, a week or so late, so it might be late notice for Polathon for some of you. Um, let me know if you're going to take part in any of the readathons. I'd love to hear about them. I'd love to hear what your plans are. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel and I'll will try and be consistent about uploading this month. January didn't go as well as I'd hoped, um, but unfortunately I had issues with my laptop and I, yeah, it, I find it easier to upload my videos through my laptop than I do my phone. Um, so yes, that was just a bit of a pain for me. So yeah, um, I will talk to you down below. So yeah, I look forward to seeing you in my next video, which will hopefully be next Monday. Bye.